This piece of exhaust is made from titanium, and if you haven't guessed by now, that giant hole in the middle of it is not supposed to be there. Uh, something evidently broke off, and the customer just wants it eliminated. Now, I wish I could say that there was drama in this one for a more thrilling repair video, but everything went just fine, aside from the hole that I blew into it. So if you want to see that, stick around. I'll show you. We'll even talk about some other titanium-related welding stuff. The simplest solutions are usually the quickest solutions. Now, rather than fiddling around with a grinder or cutting out a patch panel or something super time consuming like that, I'm just gonna cut this whole thing out and replace it with a straight tube. Now, the length of the tube will obviously be determined by how much I decide to cut out. And I usually recommend rounding this number up to like a solid number instead of like some decimal or fraction or anything that says metric on it. It usually makes things a lot easier. And of course, before the tube gets cut out, we have to add a clocking reference, which will ensure that all the tabs and bolt holes and everything like that will all be lined up in the exact same place before we cut it off. Now, a piece of angle iron and a marker usually do this job just fine. But if you forget this step, best of luck to you. Now, a couple of you, I'm sure, are down in the comments right now after listening to what I just said and then watching me with a very keen eye of what I just measured. Well, the beauty of voiceover work is that I get to actually go back and say what I should have done and then show you that I actually did do that. So, gotcha. But either way, cutting it down is just a little bit tricky because it is a rather odd shape of a part. But I did manage to get it clamped into the vise after propping it up. I also cut the replacement tube while I was standing there at the saw, so that way I wasn't wasting a whole bunch of time running around and all that other stuff, right? Grab all your stuff to be done in one process and do it all at the same time, or at least while you're standing there. So obviously cut the old part down, grab the new tube and cut that down while you're there. And then when it goes to the prep work, you do all of that at once so you're not wasting time. And this stuff is relatively textbook, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the whole prep thing and cutting and all that. I mean, it's just, it's just cutting and facing. I mean, simple stuff. Now, cleanliness and fit up are probably the biggest killer of people attempting titanium fab or repair. I did notice the original part had some distortion in the tube, which made it a little bit out of round. Now, we can't have huge gaps in our fit up. You'll see how much of a pain just dealing with a hole is a little bit later. So I grabbed my swager tool to see if I can just barely get these to true up, and it worked out quite well. Now, if you want to build an inexpensive swager expander tool, I'll have a list of all the parts in the top comments and the description. The next part here is cleanliness. Now, the new tube will just take a quick acetone wipe to clean it up, but the old part is heavily oxidized and has deposits from the exhaust stuck to it. To tackle this, I used a dedicated flap drum to clean the inner surfaces along with a good wipe down with acetone just before I get to tacking it. And also, don't forget to add your clocking reference to the new tube. That way, everything will be in complete, perfect alignment. Now, in order to keep the tube straight, I used a piece of angle iron since the shape keeps the tubes in alignment with one another. It basically prevents them from going all crooked. Now, admittedly, I was being a little bit lazy, and I should have cut the angle down to make it easier to work with, but I did manage to use it for the time I needed it. My fit-up game is usually pretty strong with stuff like this, so it's kind of hard for it to go crooked. It is also worth mentioning here that back purging should be done when welding titanium, but I utilized a trick that I learned many years ago, which is basically cheating science. The really bad oxidation on titanium is when it gets exposed while it's basically molten, which causes a white powder called titanium dioxide to form, which will definitely cause problems with your weld. Keeping it below that point during the tack is how I get around not purging the tacks. The trade-off is that the tacks are not as strong and you have to put a lot more on them. And if you do screw it up in that very, very small margin for error window that you have there, you got to cut the tacks back out and clean it all back up. So if you're not very good with titanium, you should definitely be purging it, even during the tacks. And of course, I expect all of the aerospace professional welders to be in there lecturing me down in the comments about how all of this is completely wrong. So I'll just throw this out there. Always purge your, uh, your titanium. Yeah, there you go. And for what it's worth, you guys that are professional... This is not going into outer space. It's a motorsports part. One final step before purging this thing up and welding it out completely is to clean it. There is no such thing as a part that is too clean. So in this case, I'm going to use a red surface prep pad or a Scotch-Brite, and I'm also going to clean it down extremely well with acetone. I also like to wipe down my gloves because they also have a bunch of dirt and oils and a bunch of junk on them, right? You can see this. This is a fresh, brand new microfiber here. Look how dirty this part in my gloves are. 
So again, you can't make it too clean. So it's time to start welding now. I didn't get this on camera, but I did do a pre-purge on the part before welding it. And you'll see in some of these shots a blue hose going into the purge plugs in addition to a piece of tape covering the O2 bung. Now that hose is continuously pumping argon into the part at about five to seven cubic feet per hour. Now small parts like this are usually filled and purged for about 10 minutes before I actually start welding it because you have to displace all of the atmospheric gas, oxygen, whatever you want to call it, has to be completely out of that part. Otherwise, the titanium will get completely wrecked. Now welding titanium is really tricky for beginners because it's actually a metal like no other. It really has nothing to compare to. Its most famous characteristic is that it is sticky. Now, this is usually defeated with a change in technique, but ultimately nothing will beat constant practice with it. My technique usually involves stabbing the pool instead of letting the titanium wick or flow like normal welding. The stabbing technique does require slightly elevated wire position to get down into the pool, and the accuracy has to be near dead on. We'll get to that in just a second. But while this technique does work well, it's not foolproof. Now, check this out right here. You see how I slightly missed the pool and the wire got stuck right next to the part? Watch it again slowly. This is usually where people panic and try to rip the wire back. And that's really a dumb idea. What you should do in that situation is relax your filler hand, move the torch or the arc closer to the filler, and allow the filler to free up. Once it does, get back into it. Option B is to terminate the arc, wait for the titanium to cool under the post flow, and wiggle the stuck wire out. Remember, always save the titanium. If you panic and pull the torch away or dip the tungsten, you can potentially destroy the titanium, which, if you didn't know, is a very expensive metal. If you want to practice welding titanium, head over to weldmetalsonline.com and pick up a pack of titanium along with a pack of filler wire. I also recommend the BBW cup, which can be bought by itself or in a complete kit, which uses genuine CK Worldwide components to complement this awesome cup. Use TFS10 at checkout to save on your order. Titanium is welded with DC electrode negative polarity, and it follows the 1 amp per thousandth of thickness rule, or 40 amps per millimeter. It's also an extremely sensitive metal, which starts to oxidize at about 800 degrees Fahrenheit. That means you have to have a lot of shielding gas pumping out as you weld. Now this number 16 BBW cup is pumping out argon at about 35 cubic feet per hour, and I can only weld about an inch or so before I have to stop and let it cool under the post flow. Now periodically you'll see me using the double tap method with my foot pedal. This is just stepping on the pedal again for a brief second to keep the post flow pumping. It's a handy trick if you don't have a long post flow timer. My welding discipline is something that we often call hot and heavy. I usually weld with higher than typical amps and I move very quickly. Now, every great once in a while, that discipline will bite me in the ass like it did here. I was running just a little bit too hot, and a hole blew into the part. But watch carefully here, as I didn't panic. I simply killed the arc and kept the torch in place to let the post flow save what was left of the metal. The hole did cause a sudden release of argon from inside the part, which disrupted my shielding gas flow on the outside, which ended up oxidizing the part. However, it is not past the point of no return since the argon kept on flowing. This can be fixed, even though it looks really bad. Your foot pedal is your friend. It offers complete control of the amperage output of the machine. So the less or more you step on it, the less or more amps you have to work with. And this is really important to know and understand when it comes to working with titanium. Now, since titanium has that sticky characteristic to it, I have to really use my foot pedal to my advantage. Now, titanium is not very thermally conductive, but if I keep trying to fill a spot and the filler keeps on sticking to it, causing me to stay in the same spot longer, it's going to overheat. So the best way I've found to combat this is to concentrate the arc on the filler to melt several little droplets near the edge of the hole. This will allow a sudden rush of filler to fall into the hole once I increase the amps. I can then run back over it to keep the appearance just right. Now, it does make a little bit of a wider spot on the overall bead, but that's all just kind of part of the job. When all is said and done, the part came out pretty clean. Now, you can see in my repair that we have complete and full penetration all the way through with no color or oxidation. This is something we often call the wedding band. Now, the reason why the part probably broke in the first place is that it had very little penetration, if any. The weld kind of stuck to it, but it definitely didn't hold it. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and maybe learned a thing or two about working with titanium. Be sure to show your support by leaving a like and comment, and definitely use TFS10 at Wild Metals Online. It's how we keep these videos pumping. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Oh, and I think I charged like 200 bucks for this part or something.